Hey everyone, welcome back to a special AGT time. Cody here with Jay and AGT Commenter. We also have some special guests with us. There are two of them, but at times it seems like they have one mind. We're joined by the clairvoyants, Tommy Ten and Amelie Vontes. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Hello. Hello everyone. Thank it's you so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, so Heidi predicted back in season 11, on, of AGT that you all were going to be on your own Vegas show. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so Heidi, it looks like she's also a clairvoyant, or sometimes. <laughs> if you remember. <laughs> she was like over the crystal ball on Howie's head. Howie's head is a crystal ball, exactly. It, it was yes. shiny like a crystal ball, his head. And she predicted that, she w that we were going to have a show in Las Vegas, and it happened. And we kind of had a feeling, and we always wanted to have a show of course in vegas we it was always a big dream after being on HET, and now we're there and sometimes we have to pinch ourselves but we're really here yeah and a couple of weeks ago we just opened here at the luxor uh, theater right in las vegas and it's really amazing it's a it was a roller coaster over the last last couple of years to get where we are right now but we really enjoy performing here and the audience is great and it's just so much fun especially after the last two years being back on stage, having uh, full houses there, people smiling, you know, their eyes are open and they're just so happy to see us on stage and we are so happy to be on stage for them and especially together with America's Got Talent. It's a perfect match and we are really happy about that. Fantastic. So uh, kind of tell us what the show is about. Where are you? Is it with some other performers of America's Got Talent? Are you just by yourself? Are you doing some of the uh, performances that we're familiar with? Are you introducing some new performances? Tell us about that. So it's a very interactive show, and the dynamic is just great. There are multiple acts from, like, the best acts that have been on HET over the last season. The winners from the last couple of years, basically. Yes, yeah. and yes. there is, for example, Do a Trends, and they do amazing... Um, acrobatic stuff it's just incredible mm -hmm. then we have a danger act um that's uh, deadly games of course oh, they are wow. amazing too preacher lawson comedian so it's so many talented people and everybody is just really good in what they do and the show together it's you you can imagine like the HT finale but the best of sure. the last couple of years and it's really a high energy show we yeah. have a really long segment in the show because our segment it's different every single night it's different we work right. with the audience and Great. the audience loves that i'm in the audience getting things to and by the way here you see our little dog running up the stairs <laughs> yes he's doing yes. the warm-up for our show sometimes he's doing now that. he's warming up at the stairs <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah so i'm i'm in the audience it's every time different it's fun it's interactive people Everyone in the theater can be a part of our act. And that's the fascinating part for the audience and for us as well. And it will never get boring because it's different every night. And if you like, I can show you a little piece from the show. You want to see a, a little short clip from the show? I would Absolutely. love it, yeah. Yes. Here you go. It's time, America, the greatest talent from all over the world is coming to Las Vegas. Do not miss this. That's my mind is blown right now <laughs> that looks great and it's yeah. it's a great production it's yeah, really it's big 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 and you know there's Cirque du Soleil involved MGM HET of course and it's just 
mind-blowing. Even for us, we've performed on so many stages all over the world, but this one is definitely the biggest one we've done so far. And the fun fact, around, I don't know, maybe five years ago, we, Amelie and I, we were in this theater watching a different show because years ago, Chris Angel was performing, performing there. And we were in the audience and I was looking in the room and I said to Amelie, Amelie, if we ever perform in Las Vegas, that's the room I want to perform because it's perfect oh, for wow. us. Wow. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure. And now we are here. <laughs> so also, sometimes I can predict the future. Yeah. <laughs> Normally it's obvious, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes that's, I do. Uh, or Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Heidi's very good at predicting the future. Uh, so Commenter and I uh, just review, went back and rewatched your performances from AGT, and and one of the things that I that I talked about was how interactive your show is, and I love that you know you go down into the audience, you get you got the judges involved, you got the audience involved. It's not just you two standing up on stage and and predicting things. You you get everyone involved, which makes it um, much more interesting for for the audience. It feels like they're part of the show. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so too, because everybody knows the feeling when you experience the real magic happening in your hands and in your mind, you will remember this for the rest of your life. And it's happened to me mm. a couple of times before, and I just love that feeling, and now I love to deliver it to people. And I mean, of course, a lot of people knew us from TV, and a lot of people would think, oh, of course, the judges are in on it, they know what to say and whatever. <laughs> we pay the whole audience, of course, every night. But then they come to the theater now and watch our live show, and then they come to us after the show and they're like, no way, you could not know this because I had this item in my pocket the whole time, and it was a money clip that I got from my father, and there's sure. a very special story about it. And all of a sudden, they experience the magic themselves. And I think that's the most interesting thing about it. And also, uh, normally, you know, we are constantly on tour with our full-length show in the United States, in Europe, also in Asia. And we, we never set up with, with audience members because it would it be It would be too expensive. <laughs> and too expensive, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, it's nothing we do. It's just much more fun as it is. And for TV, of course, always our approach it is to involve, for HET especially, to involve the judges, but also involve the audience in the, in the sure. theaters, is it in the Dolby Theater or wherever, or even the audience at home. And that's like the, the goal when we, when we try to do something new, because I think it will just stick in their heads much longer if they're somehow a part of it, and if, if somehow it's special for every person in the audience. And also, sure. to sound a little egoistic, um, for us, every show is different too, of course, because no people are the same. Like the people we work with every night, we don't know what's coming. Mm -hmm. We are the clairvoyants, right. but still, right. we're like, <laughs> oh wow, that was a fun moment after the show when we talk about it because we didn't expect what's going to happen. And that's the cool thing for us. There is always this like adrenaline before the show and a good kind of nervousness where you're like, hmm. yeah, I'm excited of uh, what's about to come. And we always sure. try to challenge each other. So that's also one part to what makes it for us yeah. interesting every night. Yeah, likes to challenge me. Yeah. <laughs> we've, uh, you know, we've been fortunate to be able to interview a handful of, of acts that have been on the show. I'm always interested to know kind of how you, how you got on America's Got Talent. What was kind of your journey to, to, and maybe why America's Got Talent, maybe just in general. So when we met, it was yeah, around 10 years ago, basically almost exactly 10 years the ago. The two of us, yeah. yeah mm. uh, when the two of us met. And first, I mean, I, I didn't saw Amelie in her full beauty. I only saw one picture from Amelie. I, I have it on the computer. Oh, you do? I can show oh, you this. No. Here. That's the very first <laughs> picture I saw from Amelie. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Love at first sight, right? <laughs> if you're really into knees. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, now in our in our uh, full length show, we have a we have an act about uh, stockings and socks because just that inspired us somehow. But we met, we worked together on on a TV show in Austria back then, and we really quick figured out that we just you know we we work together really well. We we have like the same spirit we want to create something new we want to bring something on stage people haven't seen before 
And since that, we are working on that. And our goal was always having a full-length show, not only like little segments, always a full piece. And then we started with our acts. First, we w our big first contract in the U.S. was on a on a cruise ship for a Norwegian cruise line. It was like half a year, 350 shows. They built a theater for our show, so that was really cool. Mm. Mm. After that, we went on tour with the Illusionists. We had like two, three world tours worldwide, and then basically America's Got Talent said, uh, Got Talent said there are these two from Austria. They do something no one else is doing. We'll need them in the show. And they ask us if we want to be part of it, if we want to um, go into this competition. And, you know, we thought about it a little bit. Yeah, and for us it was just the best opportunity because we always wanted to show what we love to do, as much people as possible, and what's better than America's Got Talent. The season we were on, 18 million people were watching. And mm -hmm. just a side effect, like side fact, Austria has 8 million inhabitants <laughs> so oh, wow yeah it was more double people watching us each uh, week and it was just amazing and crazy and an awesome journey and of course then uh, when we when we started with our america's got talent experience step by step from show to show building up what we're doing we always want to make a big thing of out of it so the basic what we are doing it, it doesn't need anything it just needs amelie and myself but we always have the goal to make it big, to make it beautiful, to make it visual for the audience as well. Because, you know, now with our full length show, sometimes we have 10,000 people in the audience and it should work till the last row, you know. It should be sure. big, visual and just mind blowing. And we learned a lot during America's Got Talent. Oh, yes. And now we all together perform 13, 14 times on HET with all the uh, Christmas special and America's. Yeah, sure champions and everything <coughs> and now being part of the vegas show besides touring all over it's just uh it's an honor really working with this production for such a long time and so intense together yeah that's awesome amelie i have a question for you uh we don't see a lot of female mentalists we see a lot of men it seems to be dominated by men uh i, I guess maybe unpack a little bit like your experience as a woman uh in the the world of mentalism have you been accepted have there been hurdles that you've had to get over well it's an interesting question um i am very happy that now i see a lot more women getting into magic and mentalism so it's gotten more now but when i started 10 years ago i kind of felt alone and for us it was always important to be equal partners on stage and not just, just. I mean, um, being an assistant for a magician is sometimes even more challenging for the assistant than for the magician. They sometimes do much more work. But um, it, for me, it was just at the beginning, yeah, it was a little hard because I was seen as an assistant the whole time. Like sure. the girl in the like shiny costume bringing the table on stage and bringing something <laughs> off stage and just being pretty standing there. I can do that, but I never wanted to do it. I wanted to be mm -hmm. independent and just be in the same level as Tommy. And for Tommy, luckily, he felt the same way. And so I always, when someone said, oh, it's Tommy and his assistant, Amelie. And I was like, Amelie is good. Assistant, <laughs> you can just delete it. <laughs> and yeah, both of us had to fight for it a couple of years. But in the meantime, sure. everybody got it. <laughs> And I'm happy that I fought for it because first, you know, you're like, hmm, it's okay. Yeah, you just overhear it. It's fine. But no, if you don't feel comfortable um, in a situation, you should just say it, especially as a woman, no matter what you do and no matter what people say to you that bothers you, just say it and stand up for yourself. But also that sure. uh, what we created as the clairvoyance, it's, different i mean people don't see us as magicians or as mentalists it, it's it's something own and 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 that's i think the good part about it basically and also for us we say we can do whatever we'd like on stage as long as it's fun for us for example mm -hmm. when we or if it's and great for the audience when we did the HET finale uh back in our season 
Amelie was inside a water tank. And that's normally, that's an escape, escape uh, trick or illusion, however you right. want to no, call Houdini. it. And yeah, yeah, that was done back 100 years ago. Houdini, the big... Houdini. Houdini. <laughs> Houdini is our dog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, escape, escape artist. Escape artist. Yeah, yes. escape. He yeah. Used it yes. to get out of the water tank or water cell, and we said it's such a great prop. But use it and do something different with it. Do kind of mind reading with it. That was challenging for us, and that's always sure. how we try when we do something new. Or in our show, Amelie is not just standing there or sitting there. She's on a swing, like on a trapeze in the air. So it's artistic yeah. in there. It's, of course, stuff from the magical world, from the illusion world, um, from the mentalist world, and from basically everything. <laughs> and the cool thing, when yeah. I got into this whole um, thing of like magic and started doing what we do, I always said, Tommy, I want to levitate. I want to fly around in a room and on stage and just, you know, being very light as a feather. And so <laughs> I was like, sure, we can do it, but we need to practice. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And in the end, we, we really had an act where I was levitating and then at the same time, Tommy was le levitating too. And for me, this was really a dream coming true because I had the feeling I was flying. Yeah. So uh, it was a good segue for me when you're talking about the, the water tank trick or performance that you did in, in the finale. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Tommy, but I certainly do. You said before the, the, the performance started that you're about to do something that you'd never done before and that you will probably never do again. And so I got to know, have you done a trick or have you done something like that since? Or, or were, you, were you telling the truth that you're never going to do it again? <laughs> I mean, it was so great that we decided actually putting it in our tour and it's currently mm. we ha we're doing the water cell in our European tour. Um, we started like two years uh, right before the pandemic hit. We started the water cell again. So it took us a couple of years stage. to bring it back. But it's, sure. <laughs> it's it, you know, it, it, it looks fantastic. It's it's beautiful. And Amelie in there, I mean... It's, I don't know how she's doing it. But. <laughs> Nobody does. That, that's the exciting part. Yeah, that's the exciting part. Uh, so kind of to go with that, uh, one of the things that we love to, love to talk about it, in that trick is the Simon Cowell MX Black card that you got yes, to hold. Yes, we spent all and I'm just curious, it. you spent all of it. Yeah, because we, we looked it up, and you have to spend – minimum $250,000 a year to keep that card. <laughs> so I was just and curious, heavy, you know, the, the power, card. it's, a, oh. I'm sure it's a very heavy card. Cause that's what I was going to ask a, is, you know, how much power did, did you feel that you had just holding that card in your hand and showing it to the camera? I mean, we bought this house from his card. So. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know yet though. <laughs> Don't tell him. But maybe he will never recognize. That would be nice. No, uh, of course, it, it, it's great. And also, you know, after half a year on HET, basically it was, we know that we have the trust that we can take his wallet or his credit card mm -hmm. for his ad sure. yeah. without that he is, I don't know, saying, no, I don't want to, or giving a stupid comment or whatever. He was very brave. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> he also knows, you know, it will be okay. They don't you know, yeah. show it to the camera or destroy it or whatever, it will be fine. But I was very proud that also Simon Cowell is a big supporter of us, mm -hmm. that he, from the beginning, he said he loves what we do. He is so happy that we show something different on America's Got Talent. And yeah, I mean, we still work together and now we do the Vegas show together. So it's, we're really proud and it's nice to having, uh, in the meanwhile, friends like, like also like Howie and some of the other judges. Do you get to interact with uh, some of the other uh, AGT alum? Uh, you mentioned some of the acts that are in your show, but I'm thinking uh, Terry Fader and Piff the Magic Dragon. They've got shows there in Vegas. Do you, do you get to see them around? You know, um, to be honest, we had like a full month of rehearsals, like very intense from morning to late in the night. 
So we were just busy being in the theater and we basically didn't see anyone. But of course, <laughs> in the future now, Ah, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he wanted to join the party. In the future, yes. we will definitely check out their shows and say hello and maybe chat a little. Yeah, yeah, and I'd hope so. Most of the performers we we know, we just you know we have met over the last couple of years. We've, we're friends with some of them, and we know we know a lot of shows in Vegas. Of course, we've been here a couple of times. We performed here with Certainly. our show as well. Uh, so we know everyone and we always, when we have some time, we try to catch a show and, and watch and get entertained. <laughs> sure. So you guys, obviously you're on season 11 of, of AGT, which I personally think is, is without a doubt the best season in the history of the show. Um, when you look at the talent that was on that year between you two, obviously there's Grace Vanderwall, Sal was on that season, uh, Don, John Dornboss, who's a yep. great magician, and I go on and Sophie on. Dossie. Was there, yes, Sophie Dossie, Brian Justin Crumb, who's one of my all-time favorites. Was there at any point during that season that you were like looking around like, this is unbelievable how much talent there is this year, and did it strike you? Do you still look back on it and go, what a season that was? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So we were just recently talking about it, how much amazing people we had on our season and how successful most of them still are. I think, was it, was it Tape Face also with us? Tape Face was also, yeah. Yep, He's having yep. also his own Vegas yes. show and, you know, everybody just went crazy and wild and is so successful and I'm so happy for everyone because everybody deserves it so much, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've thought about having tape face on, but he would just do everything in mind. <laughs> so. Not a very good interview for a podcast. Yeah. Very quiet. <laughs> so you, you're uh, t So tell, tell, sorry, sorry, real quick, real quick commenter. So tell us about your, your little friend there. Yeah, that's Mr. Kony Hundini. Uh, he's in the meanwhile in our show as well, because we figured out, also he can read minds a little bit. So, ah, you, okay. by the way, you, do you want to see? A little trick from Mr. Kony Hundini. For sure. Uh, I will show Absolutely. you something because I, I do have it. Yes, here. You see, these are Mr. Kony Hundini's friends. All his friends. Okay. And if you like, it's just one of you. I mean, maybe uh, Cody or someone. Just count them out sure. loud from yep. left to right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm not sure I'm getting the entire picture. Uh, okay, so someone I'm gonna count again. See the I'm, entire picture. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. That fourteen. Is correct. Because Coney he okay. loves his friends, but sometimes he wants to have more friends, so he's just doing like a magical paw over it. Ooh. <laughs> That's enough. Mm -hmm. And now we just, as uh, you, you see very slowly, very clearly, I just changed the top two pieces. I don't remove okay. anything or put anything with it. I just changed these two pieces. And if you can do me a favor, can you count one more time from left to right? Sure. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> One got added. <laughs> he made the friend appear. Yay. He's a, boy, Tony. <laughs> he's, a he's a magical dog. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. People love him. In the meanwhile, you know, we used to get champagne backstage and flowers and chocolate. Yeah. Now it's bones, dog treats, <laughs> dog, dog treats. toys. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. For sure. It's so, okay, he's the uh, highest star. So you're you two are, are one of sixteen acts to, to be runners up of the show. So you're one of the 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 lucky ones to be one of the last two standing on the stage before they're announcing the winner. How nervous or how much pressure? How I, I, what is the feelings going through you when you're standing there waiting for it was Nick uh, to to yell who 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 won season eleven? You know, I remember the moment where I was standing there, I just, I was so thankful that we came that far, that we could show so many things to the people. 
and so much weight fell off too because for us it didn't matter if we win or if we don't win to be honest because we made it so far and everything went so well and we just loved what we did and people loved it so we felt like winners anyways and together with Ray standing there it was it was awesome and I was just really I was happy and relieved I of course hmm. maybe a little nervous too but basically just relieved and happy Sure. But yeah, you, if you, you end know, up in first place Dolby or theater. second place, it's it's life changing, yeah, you, right? You in the Dolby <laughs> Theater, you know the the one of the best stages worldwide. You know, millions of people are watching. The Dolby Theater is packed with people. They are screaming, confetti is flying around, pyrotechnics, everything. And you you know you stay there and watch and wait, but it's okay. It is what it is, and it it's, sure. Uh, just being there until the last second, until the season is over, basically, it was totally fine for us. And we were just so happy and so proud to being there until the last second. And really that people from all over America voted for us. They called, uh, did it online, everything. And I think that was like the best, what can happen for us. For sure. Jay, Jay, did you have another question? Uh, well, I am a little curious. You know, we've mentioned the pandemic a couple times here, and I, how have you guys made it through the pandemic? Has it have there been struggles? Has it been an opportunity to maybe hone your craft a little bit more? Have you been able to tour? How how's the last year and a half been for you guys? So when the pandemic started, we were basically we just started our U.S. tour with our new show, and after the second show. Everything was canceled because lockdown and everyone you know what what's going on. And we were kind of a little bit stuck in the desert in California because we were not sure what's going to happen now. Should we stay here in America? Should we or should we try to get to Europe where our family is? Because there were no flights, there was like nothing. And then after almost two weeks, we decided to go back to Europe. And we drove to LAX, Los Angeles airport. It was all the streets were empty. We arrived basically in Germany because in Austria, all the airport was closed. Then we drove to Austria, all the streets were empty. It was like very bizarre mm. um, feeling. Yeah. And then we were at home, like everyone. <laughs> and you have to imagine that the years before we were constantly touring and like always being, you know, on the road and doing stuff. And all of a sudden you're home and you're like, uh, okay, this is different. <laughs> yeah, but we really quick we figured out. I mean, we, we enjoyed also the time being at home, yeah. just. But then we really quick figured out what to do because we have so many, or we had so many projects on the table. We never had really time for to do it. So we we consulted or we wrote a, a musical show that will come on stage at some point. We did a lot of TV. We produced our own TV specials for Europe television. Hmm. Um, we did online performances, online shows all over the world. That was really fun and exciting because just to figure out something new. And then after a year-ish, you know, we slowly figured out, okay, we can continue our tour in Europe slowly, like open air shows, these kind of things. We also, uh, this year in I think March we, we started again our tours here in the United States we did some casinos um, then everything about America's Got Talent uh, the America's Got Talent live show in Las Vegas was a lot of work to get everything you know everything come together that it works as it is right now but we opened it a couple of weeks ago so it it never was boring we never. always had something to do and sure. I think we, we, we made the best out of it and we just hope that now we can continue what we love to do. We, we love being back on stage, mm -hmm. having real audiences there. And I think the people, you really feel it, they enjoy it, they have fun and they are just also happy to have live entertainment back on stage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for kind of unpacking that a little bit for me. I'm, I'm always curious, you know, what professional performers are able to do with the uh, extra time that they were given. So. That's cool. Yeah, you always okay. have to find something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really, we can't say that we suffered because we are people that we are used to uh, just 
to a situation very quickly, whether it's a tiny cabin on a, sh on a ship, or if it's touring and being on a sleeper's bus or whatever, you know, and this was a mm -hmm. new situation for us too. And we were just like, okay, we're home now. So we like cooked like crazy every day because <laughs> we were in hotels before all the time. So we were just so happy to be able to cook. And yeah, the fridge was never empty. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, so I know we're we're getting close to our, our time. I just have one uh, final question. So there's always some awkward introductions uh, from the judges when an, when an act goes goes on for auditions from AGT. Uh, they like to ask couples if they're together uh, in different forms or fashions. And I believe it was it was Howie that asked if you all were married. Anomaly, you said not yet. And I was just curious, has yet happened? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> You're engaged. I asked. There it you is. Are in there, there you go. Engaged yeah. already. And I have to tell you, yeah. we or I prepared something for you as well because everything started with the picture of Amelie, just seeing her in stockings, in socks, and now we are engaged and touring around the world. And I, I prepared a, a little special trick. I want to share with you and everyone watching. I just have to get, go okay. to my close-up table. It's over there. And if you don't okay. mind okay. watching a sure. little piece Perfect. from me, I just created for Amelie, but I would love to share it with you. Nice. Give me one nice. second. Great. Just let me know when you are ready and I will switch the camera. Ready. Ready to go. Camera switch. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ooh. top half to go with her feet now. You gotta finish with the dog. <laughs> 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 
Very nice. And very, very we nice. Were back. <laughs> great shot, Tommy. Yay. That was great. Check it again. Yep. That's also that was something well done. I, I learned during quarantine. Yeah. And in the meanwhile, as you can see, <laughs> we have a really professional studio with different cameras and settings. And it's yes. Great. There we go. <laughs> That's great. So before we wrap here, uh, maybe just tell the people where they can get more info on how to wait, get tickets to the show, um, how, how they can how they can find out more information about your guys' show in Vegas and, and all that. So the best is just follow us on Instagram, Facebook, AGT Clairvoyance, and you will find us there. Or check the website, theclairvoyance.com, and you'll find the link for the tickets. Or you can visit the Luxo website. There are, of course, also the tickets for America's Got Talent live here in Vegas every Wednesday to Sunday, 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. 500 shows in a year, so a lot of opportunities. Maybe it works out for you. But the best is, if they really want to see us, always double check on our website, theclavoins.com, because on some dates we are not in Vegas because we are on tour. For example, next year in February, we have like a tour. We are going to Lake Charles and to Scottsdale, Arizona and uh, California somewhere and Modesto a couple other, is. Modesto, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a couple, couple of other tour stops. And we also have a tour in Europe. So, but most of the year we'll be here in Las Vegas and performing at the Luxor Theatre. And living in Simon Cowell's beautiful house. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <for laughs> <this day. laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming on. This was great. Absolutely. It was thank a yes, thank you. Very thank nice questions and nice talking to you. Thank you, Tommy and Amelie. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you. <laughs> Stay safe, guys. We appreciate you. You too. You thank too. Thank you.